All right, <clears throat> I'm going to give everybody a chance to get on here real quick. Uh, again, I'm going to just wait a few minutes, guys. Let everybody get on here before we start on this thing. Uh, I know in the past I've started before everybody gets on here and I try to wait. Uh, let me know where you guys are joining me, and it'll give uh, it'll give uh, people an opportunity to uh, get into the room so we can get into this uh, segment. Uh, I'm going to be talking about, guys, I'm telling you, this is going to be an important teaching tonight that you don't want to miss, so I, I want to thank you guys. All right, Chattanooga, Iowa, uh, Kentucky. Wow. All right, guys, Greensboro, North Carolina. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Well, so I'm a little bit more calmed down now after my last uh, Periscope video that you guys probably, some of you guys probably seen this. Brother Kevin's on here. Bethany's on here. Thanks, guys, for joining me. Guys, I think you're going to enjoy this teaching. Um, so let me get to it now since everybody's starting to get on here. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, as many of you know that we uh, have now entered uh, the, the season of Teshuvah. Uh, and that's uh, Hebrew. Again, uh, the the word, and I'm going to talk about uh, this this season of Teshuvah. Uh, again, uh, when you break down the Hebrew word, guys, uh, the word uh, shuv shuv, and this is where I need somebody like Jason Armstrong, who's a lot uh, more better at these Hebrew words. I'm actually better in Greek. Uh, doing the Greek word studies, and I am the Hebrew, but the word, the S-H-U-V, the shuv, teshuvah, that's where they get that, means actually to turn. Uh, so in other, in other words, it's a season to turn or to repent uh, towards God, uh, uh, not only on a personal level, but on a national level. And I'm going to talk about the national level towards the end of the segment, but I want to deal primarily on the personal level of turning or a season of repentance. Uh, and I'm going to read a little bit of my notes here. Uh, during this season, uh, this would be when uh, many the Jews teach that this is a season in which uh, the people will turn away from sin to bring about the new year. So this is the window of opportunity. This is the time or the season in which uh, people make things right, whether if they have ought against their brother, they have unforgiveness in their heart, maybe there's strife, maybe there's something to do with their marriage, maybe there's a, a brethren uh, amongst each other, whatever the case may be, this is the season in which they make these things right. Um, and again, we can go into a lot deeper study on that tonight, but I don't, really don't want to focus on the deep studying of Teshuvah as I do. I want to focus primarily tonight on the, the, uh, on the power of, of forgiveness or again this season of repentance or turning so I do have scripture tonight that I want you to follow with me uh, as I read this uh, this is I'm going to be reading from the book of Matthew and then I'm going to be sharing a personal testimony that a lot of you's probably heard this but again I understand that we have a lot more viewers every month guys we're adding I was checking out our Facebook site today, and again, to God be the glory on this, guys, but just on the Facebook site alone, <clears throat> um, in less than a week's time, we've added over 2,000 people, 2,000 new subscribers uh, to the Facebook site alone, so I recognize that uh, many people tonight will hear uh, some of this testimony that I'm going to share for the first time. And some of you will you have heard this, but again, I believe if you'll receive what I'm about to share with you tonight, it will set you free. If you, uh, uh, if there's somebody listening to this, you're sick in body, uh, maybe you can't get a breakthrough in finances, whatever the case may be, I'm telling you, this is a key that's going to unlock this. Okay, so let me get a little bit of this from my throat real quick. All right, Matthew chapter, this is Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 23. Hey guys, therefore, if you bring your gift to the, let me back up because it, it, I got to have the wherefore before I say the therefore. Okay. Verse 22, Jesus says, but I say unto you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka shall be in danger of the council, but whoever says, you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Now, then he says, therefore, if you bring your gift 
to the altar. And therefore, remember that your brother has something against you. Let me bring this in. Uh, let me break this down as easy as we can get. Uh, thank you, Bethany. Um, if you bring your tithes and offerings to the altar and you remember that you have something against you have some kind of quarrel, you have some kind of dis, dis uh, or some kind of contention with a brother or sister or whatever the case may be. Listen what the instructions of the Lord is in verse 24. Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way first. Be reconciled to your brother and then come back and offer your gift. Listen what I'm about to tell you guys. I, I see it all the time in the body of Christ. There are so many people in the body of Christ that are faithful tithers and they give their offerings and they stand on the promise of Malachi chapter 3. Cut, bring all your tithes and your offerings into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and try me not saith, uh, herewith saith the Lord of hosts and see if I'll not open to you the windows of heaven and I'll pour out such a blessing upon you that you will not have room enough to, to receive and I will rebuke the devourer for your name's sake. Come on, we all know this verse. So we we sow our seed and our tithes and our offerings and we stand on that verse. Come on. We got it on our refrigerator. We got it on our notepad. We got it on our phones. We can recite it. We memorize it. And we're standing on this. Okay? But we're not seeing breakthrough in our finances. We're giving, but we're not getting breakthrough. We're sowing. We're not getting breakthrough. We're tithing. We're not getting breakthrough. And this is just one portion of the layers I'm going to peel back in this teaching tonight. I propose to you, many people are giving, 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 or sowing, 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 whatever terminology you want to use, and they're not reaping a harvest. They're not getting a harvest because they're harboring unforgiveness in their hearts towards their brethren and their sisters. Again, towards their brothers and sisters. They're harboring hate and unforgiveness. And this is why Jesus said, don't even bother bringing in your tithes and your offerings to the church. And if you have ought against your brother, because it's not even going to be accepted. Come on, guys. This is what, uh, if you go to the book of Malachi, it talks about blemished offerings. This is a blemished offering, guys. If we bring our tithes and our offerings to the church and expect breakthrough from the Lord and we have hate and unforgiveness in our heart, God will not receive it. Well, I don't know if I believe that. Well, then argue the word of God, guys, because it's right there. Ready? Verse 25, agree with your adversary quickly while you're on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, the judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. Uh, surely I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. Now some of you say, I don't really understand that. Good, because we're going to peel off a deeper layer, okay? Okay. Now we're going to Matthew chapter 18. Come on, this is good. We're going to get to some good stuff tonight. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. And then Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how often shall I shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? And Jesus said unto him, I do not say unto you up to seven times, but 70 times seven. In other words, why are you putting limitations on how many times you should uh, forgive someone? Jesus is saying, you're not, you're not to even count it. We are to live a lifestyle of forgiveness. Come on, guys. Jesus was on the cross, and the last words out of his mouth was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what, they, what they're doing. Stephen was being stoned in the book of Acts. And the Bible says that he cried out and said, Jesus, he says, uh, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the Bible says that he looked and pierced into heaven. And for everywhere in the Bible, you see that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. But the one time that you see him standing is in the book of Acts with Stephen, when he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And Stephen, peel, uh, he peers through the veils of heaven, and he sees Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Do you know why he was standing and not sitting? 
because in the Old Testament, when the high priest would make atonement for the sins of the people and for the nation, he would stand up and he would sprinkle the blood on, on the articles of the furniture and for the remission of the sins. Jesus was standing because when Stephen said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus stood up as the high priest. Come on, as the uh, uh, as the one who's an advocate between us and the Father. Uh, and he stood up and he made remission for their sins because Stephen stood in the gap on their behalf. So again, Jesus says, uh, look, there is no limitations of how many times we should forgive our brother and our sister. Okay, ready? This is where it gets heavy, guys. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10, I'm going to say $10,000, okay, to make this easy. But as he was not able to pay, no, miracles have not ceased. If you're born again, you're a miracle. Uh, miracles have not ceased. Uh, but as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he uh, and the and the payment be made uh the servant therefore fell down before him saying master have patience with me and i will pay you all whoever asked me that statement um do miracles still exist if uh, listen stay on this segment do not leave Stay here because here in a minute when I get through the text, I'm going to tell you a miracle that I experienced in my own life. An impossible miracle that happened and it had to do with me forgiving someone. So please, if you want to know if miracles still exist, stay on this segment. I'm about to tell you one. So just, just bear with me for just a second. Okay. But as he was not able to pay, again, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife, his children, and all that he had and the payment be made. Okay. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him and forgave him the debt. Remember, $10,000. But that very servant who was forgave of ten, or who was forgiven of $10,000 went out and found one of his servants who owed him $100. And he laid hands on him, and that wasn't a blessing, by the way, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And that servant who was forgiven $10,000 would not have patience upon this guy who owed him $100. And he went and threw him in prison until he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were grieved and came and told their master, you know, the one that forgave him of the $10,000, all that had been done. Then his master, after he, after he had called him in, said to him, listen what the master says to the servant, ready? Quote, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not have compassion on your fellow servant just as I have pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the tormentors until he should pay all that was due to him. Listen to verse 35. I want you to underline this. I want you to highlight this. Whatever you got to do, do not forget this statement. Ready? So my heavenly father also will do to each of you from his heart if he does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Whoa. Wait a minute. What the Lord, that's in red, guys. In my Bible, all that's in red. That's in other words, that's saying Jesus is speaking here. In other words, pay attention. And Jesus says right here, He tells, He tells, He tells a story of a man who had who had a ten thousand dollar debt who was forgiven, and that very man went out and found someone under him who owed him a hundred dollars, and he would not forgive him. And it was reported back to this man, and the Bible says that the master of that man delivered him to the tormentors until he paid what was due. And it says, so shall my heavenly father will do to each one of you. If you do not forgive men of their trespasses, listen, the, the son of the living God hung on the cross and said, father, forgive them for they know not what they do and forgave us 
forgave us from his heart and we dare uh, we dare tread on the blood of Jesus and what he did on Calvary and we can't forgive our brothers we can't forgive our sisters we can't forgive people of petty stuff that we hold bitterness resentment and unforgiveness over after all that Jesus did but guys the Lord takes this a step further and he says if you don't forgive men of their trespasses what does he mean you are my heavenly father will cast you into cast you into a pit and appoint tormentors over you until you forgive men from your heart. You, you ready for this? Come on. King Saul is a perfect example. The Bible says that when unforgiveness entered his heart and jealousy, the Bible says that he opened himself up to tormentors. And you want to know what those tormentors were? They were evil spirits that were sent out to distress him from that day forward. And there was, if you studied out, there were seven evil spirits that were sent to torment Saul because he would not forgive David from his heart because he opened it up through jealousy. Listen, guys, I propose to you that the reason why people are not being healed, they're, they're, they're vexed with sicknesses, diseases, and infirmities, and they're not being healed. They're crying out for deliverance. Come on, they're fasting. Well, I don't know about that. Read, read Isaiah chapter 58. Let me just turn there because I, I just, I feel... Uh, and, and it may not be from you guys, but I just, listen, the spirit of God is, he's, he's, uh, he's, he is, which was, which is, and which is to come. So I believe that there'll be people watching this by YouTube and that I believe I'm getting kicked back from, uh, from some of the stuff I'm saying because people don't want to believe this. But if you read Isaiah 58, which is the fasting chapter, it says, uh, even in here it says, Is this not the fast which I have chosen for a man to afflict his soul, that he bowed down his head uh, like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast and acceptable day, a day of the Lord? Is this not a fast which I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and that the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke, and that you share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring your house to the poor who are cast out? And he goes on, he says, you see the naked, you clothe him, this and that. And so, come on, we can shout over all these promises. Our healing spring, uh, springing forth speedily. Our light shall go as the noonday. Come on, we're going to get answers. We're going to get directions. But come on, read down to verse 9. This is, nobody ever wants to read this. Ready? And then you shall call and the Lord will answer. And you shall cry and he will say, here I am. And listen, but it's conditional. Listen, every promise of the word of God is conditional. I know people out there teach, I tell you what, every promise of the word of God is mine and it's yes and amen to those that believe and we have no responsibility. Baloney, every promise, excuse me. listen, I can take you all through the word of God. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord God and, and heed his commandments and, and observe to do his statutes, then I will do this. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, then I'll make you the head and not the tail and above and not beneath. If you shall hearken to me this day, then I'll bless you coming in and bless you going out in this and that. We know all the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. We know all the blessings of Leviticus 26, but we never read the other side. But if you shall not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, if you shall not heed his commandments, if you shall not walk in his statutes, then you'll be the tail and not the head. You will borrow all the days of your life and not lend. You shall be on the bottom and not the top. Your, your ground beneath you shall be brass. The heavens shall be bronze. Come on. You'll, you'll sow much, but bring in little. Haggai said you'll put your money in a bag with holes in it and we don't understand all this because listen we're getting a half spoken gospel we're getting a partially watered down dilute diluted gospel but i'm going to tell you if, if if the lord is not raising me up for anything else but this i want to give you the whole gospel if you go to isaiah 58 Verse 9, it says, If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. Come on, guys. We can't sit here and keep... Uh, uh, and I, I'm going to get on this... Band. I'm going to get on my soapbox right now. I'm so sick and tired of the body of Christ cutting every minister down, cutting every ministry down, and then we wonder why we can't get blessed. 
We, this Our whole mentality is cut everybody else down, tear every ministry down. Listen, I said this the other day. If your entire ministry is built on tearing everybody else down, then I question who commissioned you because I, I don't think it's the Lord. Listen, I posted just, just tonight, I posted a video uh, from Lisa Bevere who was given a very encouraging message about uh, if you're being attacked and the attack of, uh, of the enemy and how it's a because it's a threat to the to to what you're doing for the work of the Lord and I posted this little 50 second clip and nobody wanted to listen to it nobody gave it a chance instead they begin to criticize and bash because it came from TBN oh you're a false prophet oh I can't believe you posted this this and that listen guys. And then we wonder why we can't get blessed. We wonder why we can't prosper. We wonder why every time we get we live paycheck to paycheck, and every time we get any kind of little bit to get on top, it seems like that we're putting our money with in a bag with holes in it. It seems like we can't get any deliverance out of torment. We can't get deliverance out of fear. We can't get deliver deliverance out of bondage. We can't get out of anxiety. We can't overcome worry. We can't get deliverance from sickness, from diseases from infirmities. Listen, I'm going to tell you why. Because I, could it be possible because you've harbored all this in your heart that the Lord has put you into a place of a almost like a spiritual prison. He shut up the heavens over you. He's made the ground beneath you bronze. He's restraining your blessing because you have unforgiveness. And listen, I'm in the Bible, guys. So shall my heavenly Father do unto you if you forgive not men from uh, from your heart of their trespasses. Now, let me share, and I hope the brother or sister, whoever you were, was on here earlier. And you asked me, do miracles exist today? I'm about to share one of the greatest miracles that I've ever personally experienced or ever heard in my life. Um, and here we go. All right, hold on. Just give me just a second. Thank you, guys. All right. Years ago, uh, I was at Evangel World Prayer Center. Again, please bear witness, bear witness with me, guys. If, uh, if you've heard this story, not everybody's heard this. But uh, years ago, I, I lived in Louisville, Kentucky, and I went to Evangel World Prayer Center with Pastor Bob Rogers. Many of you guys uh, know uh, who that is. Very powerful man of God, man of faith. Uh, in fact, uh, every book that you got, some of you guys got this book uh, by Jensen Franklin on fasting. Uh, do you know where he got all that information from? Pastor Bob Rogers. He's one of the pioneers of fasting and prayer and faith. I learned all that stuff. Everything I learned about faith, uh, uh, everything I learned about faith, about fasting, and, and about even giving and receiving, I learned it. He's one of my uh, one of my great mentors, mentors, and I dare to say spiritual fathers because I sat under him for years, and he taught me all these principles. But nevertheless, I was there. Yes, he does. Uh, you can go to evangelworldprayercenter.org. Again, evangelworldprayercenter.org. One of his greatest books, and I've got it on my shelf, is called The 21-Day Fast. Guys, get that book. It is revolutionary, powerful book, okay? Anyway, um, so we were at Evangel World Prayer Center, and Tommy Tinney, anybody heard of Tommy Tinney? Um, he's the author of, in fact, um, right here. Let me get this real quick. This book right here. I know this is probably backwards, but... Tommy Tenney wrote this book. This is one of the best books of all time is uh, the, the God Chasers. Yes, uh, and I believe the original was God Chasers, but they changed it to The God Chasers. But man, I pulled this book back out uh, and I might read a little bit of a portion of this later on tonight if we've got time. But man, I pulled this back out because I've been reading this. Can I borrow it? Sure. Uh, uh, Talena, yes, when I'm done with this, uh, I can just remind me and I'll let you borrow that. But uh, uh, but nevertheless, I pulled that back out, man. I've been reading this to my seven-year-old uh, because I, I want them hungry for the deep things of God. Okay, so anyway, Tommy Tenney was there speaking. And uh, consequently enough, he was speaking on the power of forgiveness. Uh, and while I was there, guys... Um, he began to, it was towards the end of the service and he began to, uh, he talked about many of you 
have harbored unforgiveness for years. And he began to give a word of knowledge. And he said, there's, he said, there's either an individual or individuals here who uh, you have harbored unforgiveness towards your father for years. Uh, and the Lord wants to set you free tonight. Now, what Tommy Tenney didn't know, but God did, that I was in that service that night. Here I am. And I'm about 25 years of age. Uh, tw well, yeah, I was about 24, 25 years of age. Uh, and never uh, since when I was about three to six months old. I don't know because I was so young. Somewhere between three to six months old. Uh, guys, when I was in my, I was still in a crib, three to six months old. My biological father left me in the crib, left my uh, he left my mother, he left us, he left our family, uh, and he was gone. So for um, safely, I'd say 25 years, I did not even know if my biological father was still living. Uh, and I was raised by my stepdad uh, when I was about five years of age from there on out. Um, so here I am in this service, and I knew the Holy Spirit was convicting me and dealing with my heart. Because I, I had this unforgiveness that I was harbored because I didn't understand. And especially now that I'm a father of two young boys, I don't understand how a father could leave his children. I don't get that. I don't understand that. And to this day, I don't understand that. But nevertheless, I was wrestling with this, guys. Um, I couldn't understand how someone could leave their own child. And and I, I remember I was in this service. Listen, guys, you got to listen to this. I asked the Lord that night. Here's what I asked the Lord. I said, I said, God, is my dad alive? That's what I asked him. I said, is my father living? And you want to know what he asked me? Here's the answer I got, guys. When I asked him, I, I'm telling you, I heard it in my spirit. When I said, is my father, uh, is my father alive? I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and says, here's what he, he's, this is, was his answer. He says, do you forgive him? He didn't say yes. He didn't say no. He said, do you forgive him? And guys, I can't explain it. But when the Holy Spirit asked me that, this overwhelming presence came upon me and I was broken. Guys, honestly, I kind of like blocked out. I was so broken. And, and, and I mean, I was, you know, the Bible says a broken heart and a contrite spirit, the Lord will not despise. I was broken and I was weeping. Man, I feel every hair on my body standing up right now. I can feel the presence of the Lord talking about this. I believe somebody's really getting touched right now by me talk, talking about this. But um, guys, I was I was so broken and weeping that I put my head down. I couldn't even answer the altar call. I couldn't because he called people to the front. But I was I had my head down. And I was just weeping, just shaking and convulsively just weeping. And I said, yes, God, everything in me. And I just forgave my father for the first time in 25 years. I released him. Come on, somebody. We're talking about the power of forgiveness. And I released my father. And I had this overwhelming peace come over me. But, to the, but I never received the answer to the question, is my dad alive? The Lord never answered my question. But that night... Regardless of whether he was alive, whether he was dead, it didn't matter. I was released from the prison that I was in, that I remained in for 25 years, guys. I remained in that prison for 25 years, and I, re and I broke free that night and was released. Okay? Then several months went by, and we here we are. We went up to... And, and honestly, guys, if I remember... Um, what I rem if I remember this happened during this very season of Teshuvah. Imagine that. God knows what he's doing, guys. There's a purpose and a plan for every season under heaven. If you're I believe there's people watching this, and it's not a coincidence that you tuned in tonight watching this, okay? I believe God has a miracle for you. Uh, and and your blessing has been locked up, and and by you releasing somebody tonight or a situation through forgiveness, I believe it's going to release your blessing. Okay, so several months went by after this, and uh, we entered the the month of January. Now, if anybody knows Pastor Bob Rogers, uh, and Evangel World Prayer Center, and 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 Jensen Franklin and Free Chapel, you'll know that when you enter January, you're going to enter into the time of the 21 day fast. So here we are. Here's my wife and I. And uh, it was time for us 
to uh, to enter into this. And we, guys, we had uh, a lot of of uh, prayer requests that we had. Um, we we had debt, man. I'm telling you, we had so much debt, and we were believing God for a financial breakthrough. We were believing God for this and believing God for that. Come on, we had a whole list of things we were praying about, and we went on a 21 day fast, and we began to believe God uh, for these breakthroughs. Okay, so on the third day, here we are. We entered the 21 day fast. On the third day of the fast, my wife has a dream. And she comes to me, she wakes me up in the middle of the night. And she says, I just had the most crazy dream I've ever had. And she said, and I said, well, okay, well, what is it? It's three o'clock in the morning. You woke me up. Tell me the dream. She said, I had a dream that we were at church and an usher came and pulled us out of the aisle and told us that your dad is outside. And in the dream, we went outside and your dad was waiting outside. But then I woke up and I said, okay, that's that's pretty crazy. And honestly, guys, I didn't even believe it. I was like, well, you know, because remember, the Lord never told me if my dad was still alive. I didn't know. So I was just kind of like, oh, okay, whatever. And this was on the third day of the fast. So then about seven days into this fast, I had a dream. And in this dream, and I don't want to go too much into this because I want to stay to the point of what I'm talking about in this subject, but I'm going to make it straight to the point. I had a dream uh, that we got this financial breakthrough. Um, and I told Melissa about that. And I said, I believe God's, and I, I, I remember I woke her up that time in a dream and started shouting and said, I, I said, God's going to bring us the financial breakthrough that we're believing for because I just saw it in a dream. And she's like, okay, praise God, you know, so on and so forth. But guys, as we got close to about the last three days of the fast, um, the, the dream that I have of the financial breakthrough was fulfilled. And we went and shared this with Pastor Bob. Uh, and I, and we told him the whole dream. We told him about the breakthrough financially. And he was so moved by this testimony. He said, uh, he said, Ricky, I want you and Melissa to share. And guys, this is on video. I'm trying, I've got this on a VHS tape because this was years ago before DVDs became big. And, uh, and now they've done away with VHS and VHS tapes. But I'm going to try to get this put onto a DVD so that I could actually play. Yeah, I know VHS, right? Uh, some people don't even know what that means. Um, but I'm going to try to get this on a DVD so I can actually show you the testimony because Evangel uh, actually recorded all this and they had this documented and, and it shows us giving the testimony. But anyway, uh, so um, Pastor Bob says, I want you and Melissa to get up on television uh, and they have a local affiliate there out of Louisville called WBNA and on that local affiliate Pastor Bob and Evangel has a program called Word Alive and it goes and it broadcasts all through Indiana it broadcasts through all of the Louisville metro area so all these people when you get up on television they see all this so he's like I want you to get up and share this testimony I'm like what you know this was before I ever thought about getting uh, you know, into full-time ministry and being before a camera or anything. So I'm kind of like, whoa, okay. So here we are, Melissa and I. Uh, okay, thanks. Thanks for, uh, please come back and watch this on YouTube and watch the rest of this. I think you'll be blessed. Um, so here I am and I, I stand up there and uh, we give this testimony and people are cheering. Yay, praise God. You know, because listen, when one person gets a breakthrough, everybody else is in line to get a breakthrough. Because one one person's testimony is another man's breakthrough. Amen. That's why the Bible says they overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So, so we're sharing this testimony and people are cheering and people are praising God. And we go and we sit back down. And uh, we sat there and and uh, we sat down and, you know, we're just like, wow, you know, thank you, Jesus, for this breakthrough financial and everything. OK, about 25 minutes later, we're sitting there. Pastor Bob's up there and he's going on to his message. And all of a sudden, uh, Hank and Hank is one of the ushers that I knew personally at Evangel. He comes up to me. Here's Melissa and I sitting in our in the pew listening to pastor bob hank comes over to me and he says uh he, he says ricky and i said and i look over at him because he's standing over here on the pew and everybody else is there and he says there's a man outside in the parking lot 
who claims to be your father. Come on, somebody. And he wants to see you. Now, guys, I you got to understand, I'm freaking out. Like, whoa, whoa, I'm about to pass out. Like, you've got to be kidding me. This is impossible. And I'm like, what? And again, here it goes, man. I can feel the presence of God on me. My hair standing up. And I said, and so I get up. Melissa and I stand up. We walk out. And again, guys, remember, this is all, yeah, yeah, me too. I, I, every time I share this testimony, no matter how many times I've shared this, it still hits me. It taught, again, I said a miracle. You want a miracle? Here's a miracle. So I walk outside, and there before me is my biological father, whom I've not seen, ever seen in 25 years standing there. I look at him. He looks at me, and he says, Ricky, I said, and his name was Philip. I knew that from my mom because she told me what his name was. And I said, Philip? And a very awkward, guys. I, I wish I could tell you that we ran and grabbed each other and hugged each other, but we didn't have no relationship with one another. So I said, uh, you know, we shook hands. And then he came over and gave me kind of hug. And the first thing I asked him, how? How did you find me? Yeah, how do you react to that? I said, uh, because remember, guys, I forgave him, so I didn't have any resentment towards him anymore. I forgave the man, okay? Uh, but the first thing out of my mouth was, how? How did you find me? Because remember, the Lord showed my wife in a dream, uh, you know, way before this ever happened. And I said, so I asked him, how did you find out? Now, you ready for this? This is how he found me. Okay, at Evangel, they're so big. The church is so big that they have multiple services. So we... My wife and I went to the 10.30 a.m. service, and uh, I didn't know this, but apparently my dad and my stepmom was going to the 9 o'clock service. Let me say that again. you got to hear this. They were going to the 9 a.m. service, the same church we were in and didn't know it. They were going to the 9 o'clock service, and Melissa and I was going to the 10.30 service. So... When we got up on television and gave our testimony, my dad had, because they didn't televise the 9 o'clock service, but they televised the 1030 service. So here they are. My dad said, we were getting ready to go out of town for a few days, and we had it on television on the background. We had a banjo on. And when you guys stood up and we heard Pastor Bob mention your name and said, Ricky Scaparo, my dad said he whipped around and looked up on the screen and he told my stepmom, Dora, he said, that's my son. He said, oh my God, that's my son. And he said, hurry up, we got to get to Evangel. He said, I've been looking for my son for years and there he is. So that's why they drove up to the church and that's how it all happened, guys. He drove up to the church, there I am. And listen, listen how good God is, guys. Let me get to the heavy part, ready? That's a miracle, right? That's a tw that again. That's a fasting miracle that unlocked this. But and we used to, and and Pastor Bob contributes that miracle to fasting. And and yes, I don't have any arguments against that because I believe that was part of a miracle of fasting, right? But here's another key that I, I don't even know if I've shared this with Pastor Bob. But when the dust settled and I was in my prayer time with the Lord, the Lord spoke to me and said. And he, he said, Ricky, do you remember when you asked me months, months before I brought your dad to your life? Remember when you asked me in that service, is my dad alive? And I said, yes, Lord, because I remember asking you and you never answered me. And and he said, yes. And I asked you, do you forgive him? And I said, yes, Lord. And I did. And he says, I know. He says, uh, he says, you've done good. You've done well. You've done according to what I've asked you and commanded you. And he, this, and then listen, you ready for this guy? Guys, somebody's got to hear this. He said, if you would have never forgave him from your heart, he said, I would have never been able to release that miracle to you. I would have never been able to reconcile this relationship to you because the blessing would have been restrained because I cannot bless unforgiveness. Guys, I wept and said, oh my gosh. And it was like a huge revelation went off. And the Lord began, that's when the Lord began to show me in the scriptures that people, 
Uh, I remember we sat around one time when we were doing a Bible study and the question got proposed, why do you think people don't get healed? And I immediately came out and one of the first things I brought out was unforgiveness. Guys, uh, there's whole ministries based on cutting other ministers down and it makes me weep inside because if they do not forgive people or or bitter if they if they harbor bitterness and unforgiveness and resentment towards other ministers or people or family members whatever the case may be maybe you're watching this t tonight you've tuned in and you have a father or a mother or a brother or sister or an aunt or an uncle or someone who's molested you or someone who's hurt you listen i know what it's like to be hurt for 25 years, I harbored unforgiveness towards someone who I never saw in the flesh, and I had to forgive them. I had to release them. I'm telling you, the power of God is here tonight to set you free through the power of forgiveness. Listen, guys, it will unlock blessings of finances to you. It will unlock blessings of miracles, the same miracle. God is no respecter of persons. If he brought my dad, and listen, it goes deeper than that, guys. Um Years after that, not not shortly after that, I was able to reconcile my relationship with him. But then just about four short years ago, my dad ended up being, uh, he contracted uh, fibrosis of the lungs and he ended up dying and he went on to be with the Lord. And look how good God is, guys. If I would have harbored unforgiveness in my heart, the Lord knew ahead of time that my dad would have died and we would have never reconciled our relationship. But God is sovereign. He is a good God. Man, I feel the, the, the Spirit of God just messing with me right now. Listen, it is not the will of God. It, the, the, the will of God is that none perish and all come to repentance. It's the will of God that somebody's marriage be reconciled and not see divorce. It's the will of God for you to be reconciled back to your relationship with your mother, your father, your stepfather, your stepmother, your your co-worker, your pastor, come on somebody, your brother, your sister, come on, love holds no, keeps no records of wrong, according to 1 Corinthians 13, yes, I know it's hard, guys, but I'm telling you, by his grace, you can forgive and release people tonight and break out of this box of torment that the devil has kept you in for years and years and years, so Guys, I, I, again, this is the season. This is the season of repentance to turn, turn from these things and release people through forgiveness, guys. I just want to pray with you guys right now because uh, I, I, I really feel the Spirit of God just all over me right now. And I believe there's that power to do. And listen, guys, and there may be however many people watching this, but I believe that when this goes on YouTube, that thousands and thousands of people will watch this. And I believe the power of God can set them free in Jesus name. Father, I pray right now about that your spirit, God, you're the same spirit that I feel Lord God, upon me, your presence that's that's upon me and in me, Lord God, that that grace and that power and that 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 dunamis power that we always relate to, that 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 power to witness, that same power has also been given to us to release and to forgive our brothers and sisters, God. Lord, there's people that that, that their families are being slaughtered in the Middle East and they're forgiving them. Lord, if if how can how can we as Christians, God, not even understanding and we can't even relate to our brothers and sisters in Syria and the Middle East whom their whole family has been slaughtered and these people have forgiven these people of ISIS and these terrorists like that that Amish couple that years ago their children were gunned down Lord in that Amish village and and the very uh and and those people got up on television and forgave Lord, the gunman and forgave their family. God, that is not natural and it's not normal. But, but God, we know you said with men, this is impossible. With, with, with God, all things are possible. So Lord, we just release. Now somebody, I, I just feel the spirit of the Lord saying that somebody just needs to release somebody by name, whatever their name is. Just tell them, say, Lord, I, and I'm just going to throw some names out there just to help you with this. Lord, I release Jack. I release Bill. I release Margaret. I release Jenny. I release Jeff from whatever the, the the situation may be i release them from the uh, from the from the manipulation i release
release them from the control that they've had over my life. I release them from the hurts that they've produced in my life, from the scars and the wounds. I release them from the molestation and from the abuse. I release them from the abandonment and, and how they've left me to be an orphan. I release them. Come on, guys. The spirit of the, the, the word of God says that when my when thy father and mother forsake thee, then the Lord shall take thee up. Lord, I thank you that you're restoring relationships, restoring marriages, restoring mothers and back to their children, restoring fathers back to their children, restoring husbands, restoring wives, restoring pastors back to their flock. Lord, if they have to, break out an old time foot washing service, God, and let hearts break. Let hearts be mended. Let wounds be mended. Let hearts be reconciled and restored, God, in this season of repentance in this Teshuvah season, God. Lord, you said if we forgive not men their trespasses from our heart, neither shall our Heavenly Father, forgive us of our trespass, trespasses. So, Father, we release them tonight. And we thank you that, God, if this is a key that's unlocking a door. And, Lord, I believe that you're bringing breakthrough to the people that are listening to this. Breakthroughs that they've not seen in years. And this has been the door. And this has been the safe that that they've that the breakthroughs have been locked in and tonight god we've given them the key we've given them the access we've given them the combination by the holy spirit and his revelation tonight through the power of forgiveness guys amen and amen wow come on guys i believe that's powerful come on you need to share that with somebody you if if anything listen that needs to be shared because I'm telling you, people need to hear that uh, during this season of forgiveness. Uh, yes, what a burden to carry. Guys, we don't want to carry that burden. Look, you know, I had, I had a lady one time that rear-ended me, a brand new car, and she rear-ended rear me and put a huge hole in my bumper right around Christmas time. And she got out of the car, and uh, she didn't have any insurance, and she begged me not to call the cops. She said, I'll work it out. She said, listen, we can work this out. Just give me a call. Give me your number. And we exchanged phone numbers. And I'm telling you, listen, I'd love to tell you I wasn't upset. I was. It was a brand new car. And here's a big hole in my bumper because she had one of those bike racks that had the two uh, uh, two prongs in it. And she, th those things stabbed in the back of my car and put a huge hole in my bumper. So I went home. And I, I got an estimate and it was going to cost over five to seven hundred dollars for a whole new bumper. And so I got ready to call this lady and tell her, here's the estimate, five to seven hundred dollars. Cut me a check, whatever you got to do. Uh, and right before I listen, before I ever got the number dialed, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to forgive them. And I said, what? And the Lord said, forgive them. It's Christmas and I want you to forgive them. They have, and this is what I heard. The Lord said, forgive them of this debt. And I was like, really? And I, I struggled with it, guys. I did. So I picked up the phone, called this, I, I called this individual. And uh, uh, this guy answered the phone. And I said, so-and-so. And he said, yes. I said, this is, uh, and I said, this is Ricky. I said, this is the guy uh, that your wife rear-ended me. Uh, and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And and I said, let me give you an, I said, um, uh, you told me to get an estimate of what it was going to cost for the bumper. And he said, and you could hear him sign. He was like, man, I, you know, he knew it was going to be a lot. And I said, and I said, I just want to let you know, I did get an estimate. And he said, okay. And I said, it's going to be about five to $700. And I, and you could hear him choking up. And I said, but and listen, this is boldness guys. I said, sir, I said, I know you don't know me, but I'm a Christian. Uh, I said, I love God. And before I picked up the phone tonight, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and he told me to forgive you of this situation. Uh, and it's Christmas time. I don't know if you have kids or not, but listen, don't worry about it. Spend that money on your kids. And, and man, it's going to choke me up every time. I, and guys, I heard this grown man break down crying on the phone and sobbing. He broke down crying on the phone and he, and he could barely even speak. And he said, Sir, he and listen, he goes, I'm a Christian too. And he said, we were just praying that the Lord would speak to you and that you would forgive us of this, of this situation because we have kids and we, and we knew that if we had to pay you this money to get this bumper fixed, we wouldn't even have a Christmas for our children. Whew. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I, it just, it, it touches my heart. And I said, and I started crying. They started crying. And I knew they were really a Christian because they began to speak the word of the Lord over giving and receiving. And guys, I'm telling you, we were both rejoicing. And I'm telling you guys, I had, yes, I had a hole in my bumper, guys. But I'm telling you, I walked away with joy unspeakable and full of glory that night because I knew that I did the right thing by the Spirit of God. Whew, man. Wow. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the power of forgiveness. And guys, I'm telling you, uh, the Lord, man, I'm telling you, the Lord is touching people's hearts. Somebody, uh, somebody needs to pick up the phone tonight. Somebody needs to write a letter tonight. Somebody needs to forgive somebody tonight. I'm telling you, guys, do it. Why go to bed restless, r wrestling around with this on your heart? The Spirit of the Lord is dealing with you. And I'm telling you, guys, uh, he is moving upon people and I'm telling you, um, some people think I'm so, and listen, I know this is a side of me that you guys probably didn't even know existed because they think, you know, people like me that are watchmen are, are mean spirited. And especially after my last periscope, come on, this is totally, this is night and day contrast of my last periscope. They think I'm always mean and I'm always talking about fear mongering and, uh, and gloom and doom. But guys, listen, if you really knew the real me guys, uh, I, I, listen, I, I love God. I've been touched by the glory of God. I've been messed up and I've never been the same since. And I just, whatever it is, guys, I want to have the heart of David. You know, David sinned, uh, several times, but the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. He was a, he had a, he was a man of repentance. Um, so that's what I want guys. Uh, and man, I was going to get into this God Chasers book tonight, but I want to leave this on topic. Uh, tomorrow, um, I might get into this, guys. And in fact, I may do something just totally unorthodox, something crazy. And I, I might take us through a whole devotional on God Chasers. Yeah, I know it's old. But come on, we, you know, I feel, I feel like there's a fresh wind on this because it's what's behind it. It's we're not seeking. The days are over, guys, of seeking the hand of God. We I believe God is raising up the generation of Jacob who's seeking after the face of God. I know I'm one of them. And I believe you guys are that remnant, too, that is seeking after the face of God. Guys, we're, the days are over of seeking uh, the, 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 the hand of God. We've got to have the face of God. We I want to. I want to move of the glory of God. Let me read. Can I read one segment of this, guys? Just one segment. I'll let you go. I know it's getting late. One little segment. One segment, okay? Um, I'm going to read this real quick. All right? Let me jump over here. This Again, this is in the book of... Uh, this is in God Chasers. All right? So here's Tommy Tenney. The pastor has Tommy Tenney come up. Uh, he's a guest speaker, and that morning, it, the, Tommy talks about in this book that the glory, the presence of God becomes so thick and tangible that they could hardly breathe. Okay, this is on page seven of God Chasers, uh, and he says that. When he stood up, he read, again, the pastor read the portion out of 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Very familiar passage. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And I want to say this. If we're ever going to see a revival, guys, you will never see a revival unless there is a, unless there is repentance preached where there's no repentance preached there'll be no revival you go study every move of god every awakening the second first great awakening second great awakening every revival started with repentance and he so here's this man this pastor stands up reads this then i'm going to i'm going to read the quote quote then he closed his Bible, gripped the edges of the pulpit with trembling hands and said, the word of the Lord to us is to stop seeking his benefits and seek him. We are not to seek his hands any longer, but seek his face. In that instant, I heard what sounded like a thunderclap echo through the building and the pastor was literally picked up and thrown backwards about 10 feet, effectively separating him from the pulpit. Okay, then he goes on and says, by the time the pulpit hit the ground, it was split in half. 
Guys, the glory of God struck this building to the point where the pastor was knocked off his feet and the pulpit was split in half. He says the tangible terror of the presence of God filled the room. Come on, this is what we need. God, do it again. I say dare do it again. Come on, split some pulpits. Knock some pastors off their feet if you've got to. Listen, but when that happened, he goes on and says, when that happened, that people all over the building began to weep and wail. It was pure pandemonium. People shoved one another out of the way. They couldn't wait. They wouldn't wait for the aisles to clear. They climbed over pews. Businessmen tore their ties off and they literally stacked on top one another in repentance and crying and weeping. And the most horribly harmonious sound of repentance you ever heard. Oh, come on, somebody. If you've ever been in a true revival service and in the true glory of God, there is a sound that comes from the deep yearning of people through weeping and travail. Guys, there is a sound of revival that some people don't even know what I'm talking about. But if you've ever been in a service where the true sounds of revival begin to sound in the building, you'll never be the same. Come on. Normal will never cut it. Come on. No Nothing will ever be the same. And from that day forward, you will be addicted to the presence of God. And from that day forward, quote, this was the first of seven altar calls that day. Okay. When it was around 11 a.m., this happened at the eight o'clock service. At 11 o'clock, there was no one leaving the building. They were laid out, weeping, travailing, laying out. Nobody left the building. People were still on their faces. And even though there was hardly any music being played at this point of worship, there was worship rampant and uninhibited. Unhibit, un Grown men were ballet dancing. Little children were weeping in repentance. Guys, I want my children to experience this so bad. You don't even understand. People were on their faces, on their feet, on their knees, mostly in his presence. People began to feel an urgent need to be baptized. Hundreds and hundreds of people were baptized. For two and a half hours, people were being baptized. One altar call after another, and hundreds of people came forward. Now, guys, I, this next part, guys, it breaks me every time. Okay, listen to this. As people drove onto the parking lot, they sensed the presence of God so strong that grown men began to weep uncontrollably. They found themselves driving up onto the parking lot or into the grass, not knowing what was going on. Some started to get out of their cars and could barely manage to stagger across the parking lot. Some came inside the building building only to fall on their face on the floor before they could even barely get through the doors. And then others ran and was and they collapsed in the hallway in repentance. Guys, this is what we need right now. This is what I'm praying for, guys. And this leads me to the final point of this segment, guys. This is the season of Teshuvah turning. It's a season on a personal level of repentance, but it's a season of a national level. If there was ever a window of opportunity for a national revival, it's now. And I'm calling every single person under the sound of my voice right where you're at to begin to join me and begin to pray. Father, you said that if you're people that are called by, by, by your name, God, that's us. That's brothers and sisters, those that have been born again, blood washed saints of the most high God. Lord, you said if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves. Lord, that word humble means to turn from their sins through fasting, through prayer, and turning to turn, to test Shabbat. Lord, to turn from their sins in wicked ways. Lord, then shall you hear from heaven and heal our land. God, our nation is in need of healing, O oh God. God, you know that our nation has turned to abominations. We've turned to wicked idolatry. God, we're slaughtering innocent children in the name of, Lord God, of abortion. Lord, we're shedding the blood of innocence God we're we're stacking upon abomination upon abomination this nation God we've turned from the living God but God I believe that there's still a remnant that's crying out making up the hedge Lord Isaiah said that I looked and I looked and I looked and I was exhausted and could I find a man who would stand in the gap and make up the hedge God I believe that the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro over the entire earth looking for someone he can show himself strong through whose heart 
is turned towards you. God, if anybody else, Lord, we're turning to you and we're asking God that you would be slow to anger and quick to mercy. God, forgive us. Look upon your people. Lord, those that are watching now, Lord, those that are crying out for revival in this nation, God, send a move of God that will never walk away satisfied again, that will never be complacent with normal, will never be satisfied with normal, God. But Lord, if you have to do like you did and, and just like we read in this story, God, split pulpits, God, shake nations. You said in Haggai chapter 2, everything that can be shaken once again, yet it is a little while. Heaven and earth shall be shaken. Lord, you said heaven and earth, sea and the dry land and everything that can be shaken shall be shaken. God, I dare to say shake us, oh God. Shake the churches. Shake the pastors. Shake the leadership. Shake the ministries, oh God. Because you said that the latter glory shall be greater than the former, God. Lord, you're shaking dead trees and getting off dead, fruitless, barrenness branches, God, that are not bearing fruit, God. Lord, even in your word in the book of Luke, Lord, you said that the vine dresser came and he sought fruit and found none after four years. In the and Lord, the man said, let me dig and dung it so that you can come back. Give it one more year, God. Lord, oh God, we say one more time, oh God, let us, ding, let us dig and dung it, God. Let us plow, God. Let us break up the fallow God, ground, God. Forgive us for hewing out cisterns that can hold no water and turning from the true and living water. But God, look upon us one more more time, oh God. Lord, let this Shemitah, this cycle of economic collapse, let it be broken through repentance, broken through prayer, broken through intercession, oh God. Lord, I believe our best days are ahead, oh God. You're raising up, God, a remnant that's still standing in the gap and making up the hedge. And we do it in this season of turning, this season of Teshuvah. And it's in Jesus' name, the name of above every name that's been given in heaven and earth and lord the only name that lord god that's been given unto men in which we must be saved the name of jesus the name of yeshua lord and we thank you in jesus name amen and amen guys uh again thank you for joining me I know this was a long segment, guys, but man, I really felt the wind on that of, of the Spirit of God. I believe people tonight were set free. People will be set free. And I believe, again, uh, that God is touching and pricking hearts. People all over the nation, all over the world that will get, again, uh, content. Listen, don't, I don't care what people say. There is still a remnant out there, guys, that are contending for revival, contending for the third great awakening. And I believe, I, I'm just as bold enough to believe that I was not born uh, for by accident, but I was born for such a time as this, and so were you, to contend for it and to see it come to pass. Come on, we're making an appeal to heaven. If nobody else is, we are in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Uh, again, thank you for your support for the Ministry of End Time Headlines. Thank you for your prayers, your financial giving, your support, uh, your intercession, as always. Uh, thank you for the sharing of this segment. And guys, uh, bless you, and we'll be with you. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, and we'll probably go over our, uh, our viewpoint segment in which uh, we'll go over the headlines on our Thursday segment and uh, and whatever the, uh, word that I feel like the Lord will put on my heart. I'll share that with you, too, as uh, uh, as well. So God bless you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.